how the war profiteering scheme has been worked. Additional information provided to H.E. Cardinal Momberti and the Vatican Chancery Court, in regard to our claims of March 6, 2005, January 19, 2023, in Sikh. How the war profiteering scheme has been worked. It began in Britain with King Henry VIII. Those who have always paid attention know that no such thing as a true singular king has existed in Britain since 1087 A.D. And so, Henry VIII like his immediate predecessors and successors, was actually acting as the overseer of the Pope's Commonwealth interests in Britain. Henry VIII may have been a king in the Holy Roman Empire, but not in Britain. He may have been a king in France, too, just like Elizabeth II was a queen. In Greece. It's time for the British school curriculum to be updated accordingly and for the British people to remember the actual source of their freedom and property rights, the Norman settlement and the Magna Carta. Henry VIII sponsored the illegal and immoral and unlawful enclosure acts that began the destruction of England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales and the erasure of the property rights and political status of the people in these countries as free men and women. Thankfully, because King Henry VIII was acting in fraud, all those acts can now be erased and the substantive property assets returned to the heirs of the victims. Note the true maxim of law. No action arises from fraud. No action. None. Zero. All the way back to the roots of the original fraud which began in England with Henry VIII and the Enclosure Acts. The actual and true kings of England gave the people the Magna Carta and the Magna Carta stands no matter how many liars and apologists might appear for the Pope and his municipal and territorial corporations. So, having ascertained the beginning of the implementation of the great fraud we are now in position to view the end of it. Today, King Charles is still in the same position as King, Henry, and King, John long before either one of them. He stands as a foreign usurper operating as an overseer for the Pope's Commonwealth interests in Britain and is not any actual British monarch at all. Like his mother, King Charles has instead occupied the chair of the estates, acting as titular head of the Pope's municipal and British Crown Corporation interests. Every single one of these foreign municipal and British Crown Corporations, including but not limited to the UK, INC, have engaged in a legal, immoral, and unlawful mercenary war, for the better part of 400 years and they all need to be liquidated, with the purloined assets being returned to the possession and control of the people of England, Scotland, Ireland, Wales, and the many other countries impacted by these swindlers. Fast forward to the more modern mechanics of the banks and the phony governments operated as commercial service corporations. After the so-called, American Civil War, the British territorial, United States, government deliberately misrepresented the American government and reported that we were, missing, assumed to be, in interregnum, and they asserted a false, custodial trust interest, in us and our assets until our, return. Using this excuse and not telling us a word about it, they imported their own, territorial, military, the equivalent of the, Raj, in India, and established foreign military districts overlaying our states, and foreign military district courts, which were actually private corporate bill collection organizations in the business of collecting, war reparations. See the actions of the Territorial Congress in May of 1865 to see how they set up these carpetbagger courts and ran these foreign military tribunals as commercial corporation courts illegally, with no contract and no authorization to do any of this, all under color of law, without disclosure to the American people. They have continued this outrage to the present day, which has resulted in our counterclaims. They followed the same basic game plan in overtaking the Commonwealth nations and later, the nations of Western Europe and Japan. They claimed that the natural national government had, disappeared, or, failed to appear, and so, they claimed that they had a, custodial trust interest, all without providing disclosure to the actual people living in these countries and without any actual contract. In the name of, defending, all these illegally occupied territories, the guilty municipal corporations and territorial officers responsible, have created and engaged in no less than 250 armed mercenary conflicts under color of law and pretense of defense. They have also engaged liberally in political manipulation, repeatedly deposing popular elected governments in favor of whatever suited their commercial corporation profit motives. 
the British Crown Corporation, District of Columbia Corporation, Municipality of Washington, D.C. and affiliated British Crown Corporation such as the United States of America Corporation, have all been engaged in these nefarious, treasonous, criminal, racketeering and profiteering schemes. The expense of all these commercial mercenary wars have been passed on to the American states and people, while the profits have been siphoned off or rat-holed in federal pension funds and other slush funds controlled by the perpetrators. No public accounting or disclosure of any of this has been provided to the general public of this country. The purportedly missing Americans who have been universally coerced to perform under color of law, been illegally and unlawfully registered together with their private property, and also illegally and unlawfully securitized as collateral for the debts of these criminals. In addition to the money these municipal corporations and territorial officers made promoting all these illegal commercial mercenary, wars, for profit, and foisting off the bills for all this on their purportedly, absent, employers, they also passed on the expense of occupying all these foreign territories, to the American states and people, resulting in the creation of over 950 military bases worldwide and charging the defense expenses of all these illegally occupied countries to us. Thus, these municipal corporations and their territorial officers have had zero expenses while promoting all these crimes against their purported employers, and have retained control of our assets and credit and all the profits of their racketeering and profiteering activities, in our names, and all under color of law and false pretenses. They have done this to Britain, the United States, the former Commonwealth countries, 17 Western European countries, and Japan simply by telling big lies and pretending that no civilian governments were present, then using this to assert a protective custodial interest, until such time as the national civilian governments reappeared. It's pretty hard to reappear when you haven't gone anywhere and without having been made aware that you were ever missing. A key part of this unholy scheme was provided by the banks, especially the so-called central banks, that turned a blind eye to all of this, in order to profit from it. They knew better, but they did a little backroom, wink wink, accommodation and allowed the perpetrators of this vast multi-generational fraud scheme to access our credit and lock down our assets in, global collateral master accounts, and, economic security funds, and, economic stabilization funds, and all recorded and maintained via different colored screens on bank terminals worldwide. The only purpose that central banks have is an illegal one, and that is, to control the supply of commodities, including money and credit. While these institutions have been allowed to exist using the excuse that their activities would prevent bank runs and panics and supply shortages, and would serve to control inflation and deflation, this has not proven to be true. Since the creation of the global Federal Reserve banking system in a bought and paid for international enclave within the borders of Switzerland, the world has endured innumerable commercial mercenary, wars, currency crashes, asset thefts, depressions, illegal military confiscations, and illegal and unlawful confiscations of private assets, gross manipulation of so-called public trust interests, and perhaps most damning, purposeful inflation of national currencies and credit theft and other manipulations that cannot be justified by any public benefit. The Swiss government is responsible for harboring these pirates and promoting crime in other countries as well as their own. We demand the liquidation of all central bank corporations in recognition of the fact that they have illegally and unlawfully seized upon our assets and credit and made the same available to known criminals operating as municipal corporations run by territorial officers, the fact that the purpose of central banks is intrinsically illegal and unlawful control of trade and commodity supplies, and finally, their complete failure to provide any public benefit whatsoever to anyone but their co-conspirators in these explicit crimes against humanity. All assets held by all the central banks must be released and returned to the living people and national governments of the living people to whom these assets belong. The banks themselves need to be liquidated with prejudice and replaced by institutions that distribute prepaid credit back to the victims of these crimes and we, the living people of this planet, must receive back our assets, both our physical assets and our credit assets. The role of the banks in general, including such venerable institutions as the Bank of England and the Bank of Scotland, and their insurance partners, Lloyds of London and Barclays, in promoting and profiting from these outrageous corporate fraud schemes has to be recognized. None of this took place in a vacuum. 
Those who make their money off of war, death, and destruction will continue to promote war, death, and destruction until their corporations are liquidated and they, themselves, are exposed to full personal and commercial liability for their actions. The most expeditious route to a peaceful and productive future for humanity, is to make war and crimes of other kinds, unprofitable. The actual American government has been restored and has reappeared, in the form of 50 properly declared, published, and organized state assemblies that are not part of any district or district government, not any municipal district or franchise, either, our state assemblies, like our states, are unincorporated. In view of the great harm that the living people of this planet have experienced at the hands of run-amuck commercial corporations, especially municipal and territorial corporations operated as service providers, manufacturers, and as banks, we believe that incorporated entities need to be permanently barred from participation in government and prevented from making campaign donations to candidates in general. We also believe that the ecclesiastical courts responsible for these legal fiction entities need to be much more available to the public, just as the role and responsibility of the Pope and the Roman Curia as the principles responsible for the oversight, discipline, and liquidation of these legal fictions needs to be fully disclosed to the general public, to those most likely to be harmed, defrauded, robbed, or even murdered by these municipal corporations and their territorial overseers. We recognize the difficulty now faced by the perpetrators who have usurped against the lawful governments of so many countries. By secretively disabling so many national governments they are now faced with the necessity of expediting the return of the national governments to full function and control, knowing that the lawful British government has been incapacitated for at least 400 years and the American government was in limbo land for 160 and other national governments have similarly been misrepresented by these criminal commercial corporation usurpers, we can nonetheless strive for a peaceful, rapid, and permanent return to sanity, justice, and good government. The banks that have been dealing in fictional currencies are faced with a similar dilemma that can only be solved by the issuance of prepaid credit in limited amounts and the reintroduction of actual silver and gold-backed currencies. As the value of our credit was slowly stolen from us via the silent tax of inflation it must be returned according to us and our best interests, so as to maintain the value of the credit owed. We have chartered an institution, the Global Family Banks, to provide this service to humanity, regardless of where on earth anyone may live. This is a completely transparent and philanthropic means to return value to the victims and their lawful heirs. We do not approve of digital currencies, which are a means to surveil and control and politically manipulate people by unauthorized, unelected commercial corporations offering to act as governments again, as we said yesterday and as we repeat, thanks, but no thanks. We don't need to have our employees surveilling which brand of toothpaste we prefer or attempting to turn us into genetically modified organisms or curtailing our right and ability to buy, sell, trade, or do anything else we have a natural right to do. Any attempt by any commercial corporation to establish a monopoly, control of our access to money, to our own assets, or to our credit, will be met with immediate demand for their liquidation. Similarly, we object to the Restrict Act, which in any case is a piece of corporate legislation being pushed by criminals attempting to censor free speech in this country. The air jurisdiction above our land and soil belongs to us and has belonged to us since 1787. It does not belong to the municipal corporations that are under liquidation demand. These commercial service corporations have no authority and no contract to interfere with our access to and enjoyment of the Internet or any other technological development that makes use of our public airwaves and airspace which we may find beneficial. Likewise, they have no authority or contract to censor us or make determinations about the veracity of our opinions or facts we may bring forward for public examination and debate. We demand the liquidation of all municipal and territorial corporations that have denied our contractual guarantees and violated our substantive rights including Facebook, PayPal, CNN, CBS, NBC, ABC and the ouster of current members of the Territorial Congress who have created and supported the restrict legislation, which is antithetical to freedom of any kind, including freedom of the mind and freedom of communication. 
The idea that any municipal corporation or territorial corporation, either one, could ever derive any right to disobey the public law and trample on the constitutional guarantees owed to the American states and people, while making use of our airspace and airwaves, and profiting themselves via the use of our public resources, is loony. These corporations need to be shut down and placed under new management agreeable to the public law and the guarantees we are owed. Either that, or liquidated outright and their major shareholders and board members arrested for attempted deprivation of rights under color of law and similar offenses. We are not a democracy, and never have been. Despite the endless propaganda effort talking endlessly about our democracy, America is not a democracy. The District of Columbia, a municipal corporation, is run as a democracy. July 16, 1790. The First District of Columbia Act. Our Continental Congress set aside the 10-mile square, territory, of the District of Columbia as the land to be used by all three, three, of the newly created, federal government, subcontractors, and to serve as the seat of their territorial district government. February 27, 1801. The Second District of Columbia Act undertaken by the Territorial Congress set up two counties, established town governments for the communities in the affected area, and provided for their own district officials and judges. This Second District of Columbia Act has repeatedly been referred to as the District of Columbia Organization Act, as indeed it was, and as the Charter Act of the District of Columbia, which established it as a municipality, by the members of the U.S. Supreme Court. A final supplementary act on March 3, 1801, made the U.S. Marshals responsible for local law enforcement in the District of Columbia enclave. Since 1801 the District of Columbia has been recognized as a territory of these United States, not the municipal United States, and as a municipal corporation with its own separate government and the right to sue and be sued as a commercial corporation. It's from this original municipal government corporation that all the other municipal corporations associated with the District of Columbia derive. In 1877, as a result of malfeasance by members of the Territorial Congress, the municipality of Washington, D.C., was issued a separate municipal charter, creating a municipality within a municipality. The original district charter was broadly allowed under the terms of the peace treaties ending the War of Independence, and then required by the Constitution of the Territorial United States of America. The second municipal charter was not envisioned at all by any part of this peace process nor allowed by the use permit issued by the states of Maryland and Virginia, which did not authorize the creation of a separate, independent, international city-state on their shores, or ours. For more than a hundred years the Municipal Corporation of Washington, D.C., has been in existence and apologists for this have claimed that the plenary powers, established for the members of the Territorial Congress acting as the Washington, D.C. government allowed the formal creation of a separate, independent, international city-state on our shores. We disagree and add this to the long list of criminal usurpations by the District of Columbia Municipal Corporation and its members against us. At no time during the constitutional discussions leading up to the adoption of the federal constitutions, and this section of them in particular, was there any suggestion that Washington, D.C., would ever be a separate and independent international city-state, nor any hint that the delivery of plenary powers, over Washington, D.C. granted to members of the Territorial Congress was intended for any such purpose. Instead, the explicit purpose of the Washington, D.C. government was to ensure that all the states and federal subcontractors and foreign nations could have a safe and neutral meeting place to conduct business. Period. That was the duty and responsibility given to the members of the Territorial, District, Congress along with the plenary power to enforce it. Then as now, the intent of the grant or contract is essential and may not be bypassed, just as any duty settled upon any Congress cannot be handed over to unelected agencies and subcontractors. Once again, they, the members of the Territorial, District, Congress overstepped their authority and the purpose we had in granting that authority, to create an illegal, immoral, and unlawful hegemony for themselves, which they have used to impersonate us and usurp against our lawful authority ever since the 1870s. The municipal government operating as the United States is not the United States. 
The municipality of Washington, D.C., needs to be liquidated together with its separate municipal corporation, and all ideas that it is or can be an independent, international city-state need to be abandoned. We granted the members of the Territorial, District, Congress Plenary Control of Washington, D.C. for a specific purpose, which they evaded and twisted in blatant disregard of their use permits and constitutional contracts. It is the responsibility of the members of the Territorial Congress to dissolve that separate, unintended and unauthorized independent, international city-state and come into compliance with their own contracts and duties, stop impersonating the United States as the United States, and otherwise cease and desist all hostile acts and usurpations against their employers. Those are our purse strings, not theirs, and every bank and every federal officer and citizen of any stripe whatsoever, including the members of the Territorial, District, Congress, are hereby given notice of their contractual obligations and the limits of their authority with regard to all the matters addressed herein. Notice to agents is notice to principals, notice to principals is notice to agents. Issued by Anna Maria Riesinger, Fiduciary the United States of America in care of Box 520994. Big Lake, Alaska 99652.